Hello, everyone. Welcome to an APH Virtual Excel Academy. We are so excited to have you with us today. As you come in, feel free to drop a name in the chat. Say hello to us. We love knowing who you are and where you're from. We are going to be talking today about Rideshare. Today is Let's Ride, a guide to using Rideshare. Now, this is meant for our older students, but everybody is welcome. Just realize if this is a topic you're not ready for yet, know that maybe later in life you're going to do this, and that's okay. You might learn something. Hi, Nikki. Glad you're joining. Or, uh, Nikki, didn't know that you go by Nikki. Hello. Again, welcome to an APH Virtual Excel Academy. We are so glad to have you with us today. Today is Let's Ride, a guide to using Rideshare. Welcome, welcome. We are glad you are with us. I am going to turn it over to Amanda English and Margaret Wynn, who are our presenters for today. Take it away. Thank you, Leanne. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Amanda English. I'm a teacher consultant for visually impaired and certified orientation and mobility specialist in Michigan. And I work for the Michigan Department of Education Low Incidence Outreach. And with me is my buddy. Hi, I'm Margaret or Maggie Wynn, and I work as an orientation and mobility specialist for Oakland Schools, which is in Southeast Michigan, um, just a little bit north of Detroit. All right, let's talk a little bit about today's objectives. So as Leanne told us, this audience uh, is basically going to be for uh, middle school, high school students who are semi-independent or independent travelers. Uh, today, the students will learn steps on how to set up a ride on Rideshare, uh, such as an app like Uber or Lyft, and the second thing we'll work on is talking about safety practices for using rideshare services. And for those teachers out there, please note that there are handouts available for today's lesson, which will include some checklists for you um, if you are working on teaching rideshare. So whether you're attending live or you're watching a recorded session, there will be many opportunities today to check your knowledge and to think about what you're learning. If you are attending live, we will be having opportunities to answer poll questions and opportunities to write in the chat. We may even have opportunities for you to unmute yourself and ask a question verbally. If you're not attending live, you're not off the hook. Take a moment to think about the questions we ask. And if you wish, you can write down your answers on paper or your electronic device or talk to your instructor about your answers. Okay, we do have a disclaimer for today. Today's session is provided at an introductory level and it's intended to be informational only. Please work with your orientation and mobility specialist prior to using rideshare services independently. Attending this class does not provide sufficient training to perform the tasks without direct instruction from a qualified instructor. Okay, here comes our first question. All right. Hopefully Leanne can help me out with the poll here. And we want to know what you know. So put on your thinking cap, and I want you to answer these two questions. The first is going to examine what you know, and the second is going to help us to know a little bit about your experience using Rideshare. So here's your first question. Harry Trotter, and I didn't make a mistake there, y'all. Harry Trotter is a Rideshare provider. An example of a person using Rideshare would be A, Hermione Stranger contacts Harry's Ride Service via her phone app to ride from her house to her muggle friend's house. B, Ron Measley hails a ride in Dodgers Hollow. Or C, Fred and George Measley call Harry directly for a ride 
for their little sister, Ginny. So think about that. Which one of those is what an example of a person using rideshare would be? All right, question two. Who has used rideshare before? The answers are A, yes, I've taken it independently. B, yes, I have with my parents or another adult. Or C, no, I have not. All right, so take a look at those. And Leanne, when you think that we have enough, go ahead and close it out. It's still moving, so I'm gonna give it a minute. Some people have to navigate and listen to their screen reader. Absolutely. Looks like it slowed down, so I'm gonna end the poll. All right, let's see where we're sitting right now. And are you able to share that? Awesome. Okay, so those of you who said that A, Hermione Stranger contacts Harry's ride service via her phone app to ride from her house to her muggle friend's house, you're on the right track, folks. 88% of you knew that. Now, a few of you thought maybe, just maybe, Fred and George Measley called Harry directly for their ride. That doesn't actually happen with rideshare. So we'll take a look at it a little bit more today and hopefully you'll learn a few things. Okay, uh, who has used rideshare before? I'm super excited. 75% of you have used rideshare. That's amazing. And it looks like uh, just 13% of you have not or you've used it just with another adult. So awesome. Hopefully some of the things that we share with you today will be some really good reminding tips and maybe you'll learn a few tricks that you didn't know before. Okay, Miss Maggie, over to you. All right, so now we wanna talk about what is ride share. So the customer typically is traveling in a private automobile driven by the owner of the vehicle or someone who rents the car through the rideshare service itself. Um, service is arranged by the rider using a website or app, and the service is paid for through the app as well. The rider is requesting a pickup and drop off location using the app. Um, the rider has the opportunity to type the address in or, and have their location services on so that the service can find out where they're at using their GPS. Um, for starting points or destinations, you can use a business name, but you're going to have to be really sure about where you're at. So, for example, if you're at a business, you want to make sure that you're at the correct business that's coming up on your phone. So, in my area, there's lots of different McDonald's and restaurants, so I'd want to make sure that I was at the right one. Today, we're going to focus a lot on Uber and Lyft but it's important to know that there are other rideshare services that might be available in your area. So other ones might be Fair or Flywheel, um, Curb, Ruby Ride, Wings, Groundlink, or Halo. All right, so before we dive into requesting a ride, we wanna talk first about preparing your phone or device. So the first thing that you have to do is enable location services on your phone. So most of us have either iPhones or Android devices. Um, so for an iPhone device, you're gonna first go into settings and then into general. And once you get into general, you're gonna have to scroll until you find privacy and then location. And then you're gonna have to turn that on. For Android, you're gonna do something very similar. You're gonna go into your settings, then you're gonna go into location app and then give it permission. So whether you're using an iPhone or whether you're using an Android, you have to make sure that your location services are turned on. Next, you're gonna to wanna to load Uber or Lyft um, either through the Play Store or through the App Store. And you're gonna to wanna to check with your device's user manual to assist you with setting this up if you're not sure how to do it. All right. So once you've got the app downloaded and your device is prepared, now you're gonna to have to set up your profile. So when starting out with a new app, you're going to have to put input some personal information. So you might wanna make sure that you get permission for this. 
This information is going to include your first and last name. And you may also link your account to social media like Facebook so that the app can use your most current profile picture or you can add a picture um, to help the driver identify you. So on the right of the screen, we have a screenshot of my profile. So it says Maggie Wynn. It says that I've taken 68 total rides and it says I have a five-star rating, which I'm very proud of, and that I've been using this particular app for 6.7 years. So you're adding in your first and last name, you're adding in your picture, and then you're also going to need to add your cell phone number in of the device that you're working from. And you're also going to need to verify an email address. The email address is so the company, as they make updates or change their terms of service, you can be notified of that. You may also get um, information about new services that they provide or promotions. We'll talk about why it's really important for your phone number to be in there as well a little bit later. All right, so now we have another question for you and we're going to want you to put this in the chat. So we wanna know, have you used ride share services before? Um, so we want you to tell us a little bit about that. So either write yes or no in the chat and then tell us if that was independently or with a friend or family member. Let's see what responses we have. So we've got two people saying that nope, they have not. Jessica says yes, she has. Got two more people saying that they have and one specifying that they had independently. And yes, both alone and by myself. Another person says yes. So this is great. We've got a wide variety of people who have used it. All awesome. right. So next, Amanda is going to take us through some vocabulary to understand. Thanks, Maggie. All right, everybody. So when you're getting started with rideshare, you are gonna have a lot of different words that you're gonna to want to understand. And we're gonna talk about some of that vocabulary here. So the first is ETA. ETA stands for estimated time of arrival. It means what time do you expect to get where you are going? Someone might ask you, what's your ETA? And you might answer, I'm planning to get there at two or nine o'clock or whatever the time is that you're hoping to get to that destination. Okay, the next one is dynamic pricing. So dynamic pricing is a term that you might see when there have been changes in price due to busier times to travel. Um, so times like rush hour or a big event they might impact the cost of your ride that you're hoping to take. So you may find that the cost is too expensive and you may want to wait until the price changes before you take that trip. All right, the next terms that you're going to see are wallet and payment. So this wallet is not the wallet that's in your pocket. This wallet is a wallet that's on your, your app, okay? So it's probably on your Uber app or your Lyft app, okay? And that wallet is where you're going to store the credit card information that you'll use to pay for your ride. Okay, the last term that you're going to see is ride history or your trips. And these terms are referring to past trips that you've taken and that might be helpful for looking at information about how much did you pay for your past trip um, for a specific location or a specific date or time that you traveled? So it'll help you kind of go back and look at that history to figure out what, what might this, this trip cost me. All right. So now that you understand some of the vocabulary, let's talk about planning your trip. It's important to know that, oops, sorry gang, didn't mean to change your screen for you. There we go, I think we're back on the right spot. All right, so it's important to know your starting point address or confirm on the GPS map where you're going. So for the destination, 
you'll want to know the address or city of the business name that you're going to. You don't want to request the wrong destination. So for example, there might be two McDonald's in your town. If you are meeting a friend at the McDonald's on Main Street, but there's also a McDonald's on say Chart Street, you wanna make sure that the driver knows which McDonald's to take you to. So you will program that information right up in that little start menu box. You notice I have a picture here. It's got a big red circle around the start and the destination. Those are where you're going to put the addresses, okay? And this is a picture of my Lyft app. So you can see uh, there's a little tiny icon up at the top that says change rider and it has my picture next to it. Okay, so you're gonna put your address in that start box. You'll type it in there. That's where you want to be picked up. And then the destination is where you're going. So if you're going to McDonald's on Chart Street, you're going to put that in there. Okay. So I want you to think for a moment, where would you go on your first rideshare trip? You don't wanna put in some place that's far, far away. You want it to be relatively close to where you live within probably 20 to 30 miles. Uh, I live in Michigan, so I would not want to take a rideshare to Disney World in Florida. I think that most rideshare uh, drivers would laugh at that. Um, I might decide I want to travel to maybe my local art museum or a local restaurant. So think of places, put it in the chat. Where would you go on your first ride? And I like your, your uh, suggestion there, Sean, to check both Uber and Lyft because usually one ride is cheaper than the other and it varies. So definitely check those. All right. Nydia says she wants to go to a coffee shop. Awesome. And Donnie says he wants to go to the Division for Visually Impaired. Great idea. Deliria says the local mall. Those are all really great locations. And, and good ideas as far as where you might go on your first trip. Ooh, Brianna, I like that, the theater. I haven't been to the theater in so long, I miss it. All right, any other things that you guys can think of? Where would you like to go? One person says, Riley says that she would go to her local library. Ah, awesome, that's a great place, Riley. All right, very good. I'm going to pass it over to Miss Maggie. Oh, a band parade. Nydia, that's a great idea. I love it. All right, Maggie. Floor All right. Well. So you've used your orientation and mobility skills. You've got your starting point. You've got your destination. You've planned that out. Now you're actually ready to request a ride. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is select the Uber or Lyft app on your phone. If your pickup point is based on GPS, you're good to go because it's going to use your location to automatically populate some information. If your pickup point is not, then you're going to need to type in the address. So it's really important that you know the address. So next, you're going to select where to or where are you going. That language is going to depend on whether you're using Uber or Lyft. You're going to type in your destination. This could be you typing in an address or a point of interest. So one person suggested that they wanted to go to the theater. So if I wanted to go to the theater in Detroit, I probably would know some of the major ones. So I might type in the Fox Theater and it would automatically come up. And that would be really great because I wouldn't have to know the address. But if I was going to a destination like a friend's house, I would absolutely need to know the address. All right, so like Amanda hey Maggie, said- I have a question, it's Amanda. Sure. I have a question. What's what's the circle around the, the car that says ride? What's that all about? All right. So if you are selecting uh, on Uber, you have the option for ride or for Uber Eats. So you could select to have food delivered or you could select to request a ride. 
In some areas, you actually even have a picture of a package where you could deliver a package to a friend or family member, which is really great right now with COVID because you could send someone a package or send someone a meal. All right. Well, thank you. So once you've got that information in um, and you've selected ride, then you're going to confirm the address. All right, so you've confirmed the address, you're ready to go, but now you have some choices. Um, so your destination is confirmed. You need to select your vehicle type. So many different factors are going to go into your choices. Um, so for example, are you traveling by yourself? Are you traveling with packages? Are you traveling with a bunch of different people? Um, do you care about riding in style? Are you going somewhere fancy and you wanna show up in a nice vehicle? or even are you on a time crunch? So Uber and Lyft both offer choices that are more basic and then those that are a little more luxurious. Basic examples would be Uber X or regular Lyft. So on the screen, we have um, a picture of downtown Kalamazoo and to the right and below the picture of downtown Kalamazoo, we have a red circle that's surrounding Lyft in Lyft XL. So Lyft XL is an example of a larger vehicle. So in Lyft, it's called XL. In Uber, it's called Uber XL. And that means that it can fit up to five people, excluding the driver. So six people total with the driver. So those might be like minivans or larger SUVs. And for the same ride with Lyft, so just a regular passenger vehicle, the price is about $5.58. For Lyft XL, the larger vehicle, it's going to be $7.70. So you're paying a little bit more, um, but you can bring more people with you. All right. If you're going to a special event um, for more money, you can request an Uber premium black car, a black SUV, or a Lyft Lux black XL vehicle. Um, those are definitely going to be more money, but for the right event, you might want to pay it. In some larger cities, you also have the option of something that's kind of cool. It's called Uber Pool. And what that does is it decreases the cost of your ride, but while you're traveling, you may pick up or drop off strangers who are along your route and who are going to nearby destinations or destinations that are on your route. And sometimes you even luck out and no one is picked up. So you still get there super fast. Uber pool is a good option. If you're just going to the store midday and you're not on a schedule, you don't really have time constraints. Uber pool is not a good option though, if you're going to a doctor's appointment and you need to be on time. All right. So now that you've selected your vehicle, now we wanna talk about checking pricing. All right. So there's going to be price variations based on time of travel. Um, so things to consider will be rush hour. So rush hour in the morning or rush hour in the afternoon or event traffic. Um, so if you live in an area where you're close to a stadium or theaters, there might be times where there's a lot of people around who might all be going to or from that destination and your prices might get higher. So you'll want to avoid price surges by avoiding these prime times. There are some other things that Uber and Lyft might consider when determining cost. So for example, sometimes there's booking fees. Um, the distance can change the price. If you're in an area with tolls, you would be responsible for that. The type of vehicle, like we already talked about, that will change your price for sure. Time of day, um, whether you're in a city versus a rural area might determine the distance. Um, if you have to make a detour, your price might go up. And some larger cities even have wait time fees. So we have that same picture and over to the right, it's showing that one option is about $6 and one option is almost $8. Um, so you really wanna take a look at what's available and what suits your needs. But the key point of all of these different things is that it boils down to demand of service and what's available. All right, so now we need to check our map. Are we ready to go? 
is everything correct? So this is where your good orientation and mobility skills come into play. You are going to want to be sure that the address listed matches your location. And you want to make sure that you're on the correct side of the building for the driver to find you. Are you on the street side? If the building is on a corner, are you at the main entrance that faces the street of the address? So if you're at a corner building and you typed in the address, but there's another entrance on the side street, you need to make sure that you're on that main street in order for the driver to find you. So we have that same picture of Kalamazoo of the map in the Radisson Plaza Hotel. If anyone's been to Kalamazoo, they know that that hotel is a very large hotel and there's multiple entrances. So if someone's traveling to or from that destination, they have to know where they're being dropped off or picked up at. Hey Maggie, there is a question from Donnie in the chat that might be a good time for you to answer. Donnie's wondering how long are the wait times typically? That's a really good question, Donnie, and that varies a lot. So sometimes that varies based on um, rush hour, or that might vary based on event traffic, can also really be different based on where you live. So I live in an area where I'm close to a lot of different small downtowns, and I'm only about 13 miles north of downtown Detroit. So sometimes I can get an Uber or a Lyft in two minutes, but there's other times where I've had to wait as long as a half hour. If someone lives further away from the city center, then they might have to wait 20 to 30 or even more minutes typically. So you want to plan ahead um, or even request your ride early when you're getting ready to go to your destination. And Nydia wonders if the Uber drivers are nice. And I can tell you, Nydia, every driver I've had so far has been really nice. They often will give me all sorts of information about the city that I'm visiting. So a lot of times I use Uber or Lyft when I am traveling. And if I'm uh, having to go from like an airport to a hotel or a hotel to a restaurant when I'm when I'm in my own city, uh, they have been really helpful in telling me little things about the city that help me to feel more comfortable. So yeah, they can be really nice. All right. Awesome. I don't see any other questions, Maggie. All right. So we've gone through all the basics now. So now let's actually give an example. So we are going to um, use an example of going from one of my favorite places, the Detroit Institute of Arts, to Hitsville, USA, or the Motown Museum. So what you're going to do if you're in the Uber app is that you would select where to as a heading. If you're using voiceover, remember to use double tapping to select. If you're not using voiceover, you will just need to single tap. Once you've selected where to, it's going to automatically highlight where to. You can edit the pickup location on this screen or you can edit it after you have selected where you're going. So again, for this example, I'm being picked up at the Detroit Institute of Arts and I'm being dropped off at Hitsville, USA or Detroit's Motown Museum. Since these are popular destinations with only one location, I don't need to input the address, but I still could if I knew it. It's important to note that your starting point or pickup in information is going to automatically be pre-populated based on GPS because I've turned the lo location services on. So be sure to um, check that your pickup location is correct. You also have a really cool option for saved places. So if you're like me, you're probably traveling to a lot of the same destinations frequently, so you can save some of your favorite locations. All right, now we're going to request our ride and confirm. So we've input the information for our starting point and our destination. And now we're tapping request Uber. If we were in Lyft, we would click select Lyft. We're gonna confirm the pickup location, the dress that you're at currently. And then another really nice thing is that you have the opportunity then, once a driver's been assigned to you, to alert the driver 
um, by text or phone call. And you can tell them an exact place that you need to be picked up. So for example, the front steps of the Detroit Institute of Arts. One of the reasons that that place is one of my favorite places is, is it's an entire city block of Detroit. So it's a really great destination, but it's important to know which entrance you are at so that you can tell the driver which street you are facing. So if I've just put in the DIA, they assume that I'm on the main street, which is Woodward, but I could be on some of the side streets or even at the back of the building where there's another entrance. So I can alert the driver with a text or a phone call. Lyft actually even allows you to add a note. Once you've confirmed this information, then on foot, you're gonna head to the exact pickup location. It's also important to note that you can put other information in the text or the note. So you could of course say that you're at a specific location. You could let the driver, driver know if there was a gate code. Maybe you would tell the driver, I'm wearing a certain thing or I have luggage with me. I have my long cane out. Um, I have a guide dog with me. Or you could say, I have a vision impairment, so please alert me via text when you arrive. So you can put lots of different things in there that help you and the driver um, confirm that you're making that right connection. All right, so everyone, now it's time to start thinking about safety when using rideshare. Ride so we want you to think about this question. What are some strategies for keeping yourself safe in a ride share vehicle? So please put those things in the chat. What are some strategies for keeping yourself safe when you're traveling in a ride share vehicle? While you guys are thinking about that, uh, Brianna has a question for us, Maggie. She's, All right. On Uber, there is a part that says what, um, there's a part that says uh, Uber assist on it. And they're wondering if uh, those people are trained to help people with disabilities. So I don't know that exact answer, but I know that when drivers sign up to drive, they do have to go through different trainings um, and all drivers are supposed to allow service animals into vehicles. Yeah, I don't have a I don't have a full answer for you either, Brianna. Unfortunately, but but I do know that there have been drivers who have come to the door to help somebody who uh, is blind or visually impaired uh, to make it out to the car. I have seen that, but I don't know that it's a requirement that they have to do that. Hi, Amanda and Maggie. This is Robin from the background. It looks like Brianna. Oh, she had her hand raised to talk, and then she just put it down. Um, because it might be that you just answered her question. So uh, Bree, if you want to raise that hand again, I'll keep an eye out for it and we'll let Amanda and Maggie know. But it looks like we have just answered a question. So back hey, to you. Sweet. All right, thank you. Uh, oh, Ricky Lynn back says- Back to our Uber safety. Assist. Oh, sorry. Ricky Lynn says, Uber Assist is designed to provide additional assistance to seniors and people with disabilities. Awesome, and hey, shout out to you, Ricky Lynn. nice to see you here. All right, um, so back to our question, thinking about safety, uh, Donnie wrote, you should wear a seatbelt. Donnie, you get a gold star because I think that is the most critical piece that we should think about is putting on that seatbelt. And a lot of times you're so busy thinking about, okay, do I have my bag? Do I have my purse? Do I have my suitcase? Do I have my book? Whatever it might be. And you get in the car and you forget to put on that seatbelt. So brilliant. I'm glad you wrote that. All right. Let's see. Oh, good, good. I like this. Hang on, guys. My chat is jumping. So just a second. Um, I saw that Riley said to avoid using your last name if possible. I think that's a good idea, Riley. Nice to see you too on here. All right, uh, let's see, Casey said, share your ride info with your family member or friend. And yes, we're gonna talk about that. I think that's a great idea. 
And Jean says, no one confirmed the name of the driver before getting in the car. You guys could teach this for me. You're doing so well. All right, let's see. Again, share that, that ride information with your family. You can text a friend, have your identification ready. Oh, this is great. Keep track of where you're going. You guys are awesome at this. Way to go. I hope I didn't miss any. I think I got most everybody's. All right, very good. Let's move on. All right, so I'm, I'm so glad you guys are already thinking about safety because it's, it's so, so important um, whenever you're traveling, even, even if you're not using Uber or Lyft or rideshare, safety really should be first and foremost on your mind. So I'm gonna share with you some things um, that you will not want to say or do to start with, okay? So by saying some, some of these things, you can put yourself in more danger uh, than you want to, okay? And by telling someone basically that you don't know um, a lot of information about yourself, okay? So we're gonna talk a little bit about what not to say first and not what to do, okay? So number one, don't wear name tags on your clothing. Uh, you know, something with your name on it. You don't want somebody to be able to be like, "Oh, hey, Johnny, you know, you're gonna you're gonna ride with me," and all of a sudden you think, "Oh, that must be my driver," and it might not be. Okay, when you are waiting for your driver and somebody approaches you, don't ask them, "Hey, are you Sam?" If that was the name of the driver. Um, because if you say, are you Sam, they could just be like, yes, that's me. And it might not be your driver. Okay, we want to keep you safe and actually getting in the right car. Do not say, are you looking for Amanda? If you ask if they're looking for your name, the person, again, they could say yes. And it puts you at risk of getting in that stranger's car. Do not ask. Is this a white Toyota Camry? Again, by asking the type of car, um, basically they could just say, yep, it sure is. And you hop in the car and it might not be the car you're looking for. Okay, so we want you to stay safe. We want you to get to your destination, all right? So now let's think about some things that we should say that won't put you in danger. Okay. So for starters, on your app, you will receive a description of the car and the license plate number, okay? So if you have somebody that's riding with you, they could easily just look and confirm that, yep, it's that white Toyota Camry I'm looking for. It has the license plate number that I'm looking for. And in you go. However, if you're by yourself, um, here's some techniques that you can use to, to try to confirm that you're getting in the right car. Okay, so for starters, you can ask the driver who pulls up, who are you looking for? If they have your name and your information, that's a good sign that they're the right person. Okay, you could also ask the driver, what is your name? Hopefully they're going to say, I'm John Smith. I'm your driver today. And they might say, are you Amanda? And you would say, yes, yes, I am. Okay, that's a good sign that you're probably in the right car. You might also confirm, what is your license plate number? You can ask the driver that information. If they're not willing to give you that information, you might not want to ride with them. And it's okay to, to decline it if you have to, okay? You could also ask them, what type of car are you driving? All right, so notice by asking the questions in this manner, the driver has that responsibility of giving you the correct details before you get into their vehicle. This is going to help keep you a little bit safer. All right. We have more, there's more. Oops, I think it went up too, okay. Going back to what Donnie said, 
Donnie, you were right on the money. Wear your seatbelt. Okay, that should help keep you safe in terms of the ride. In case you know you're in a rideshare car, you don't know how safe of a driver they are. You you don't know if they are a fast driver, a slow driver, a careful driver. And even if they are all of those things, you could still get in an accident. And so having that seatbelt on is first and foremost important. Okay, remember that it may not always be safe for the driver to exit the vehicle, depending on the traffic. So sometimes they may per pull up to a curb and they can't open their door to get out to come and get your bags out of the trunk or things like that. So just be aware that sometimes it's not safe for them to get out, which leads me to say, it's not always safe for you to get out of the car either. Okay, so check with the driver to find out if it's safe to enter or exit their vehicle. Uh, and you might also wanna find out what side of the sidewalk um, is the car parked on? Like, is it is the sidewalk on the driver's side or is the sidewalk on the passenger side? So knowing that information could help keep you a little safer. Also remember in some urban locations, we have sidewalks that are right next to a bike line, uh, lane. So the bike might be coming through, might not be a car, but a bike might be traveling through and you open the door and all of a sudden, a person on a cycle will run right into your car door. That's not a good thing, right? Dangerous, dangerous for you, dangerous for them. So just make sure you're checking with the driver. Is it safe for me to open the door? And they should be able to tell you if it is or not. You also might run into things like sign poles, fire hydrants, you know, other sorts of obstacles. Make sure you use your long cane, Make sure you're using upper protective techniques when you are exiting and entering that car to just be sure that you're safe when you get in and out, okay? So be aware of your surroundings before you exit or before you enter the car. Okay, now one of you was really thinking and you said, oh, you gotta share your location. I love that. I think it's so smart. So often I'm riding all by myself. And one very neat feature that has been added to both Uber and Lyft apps is a safety feature that allows you to share your location. So please let your family members know that this feature is available. It'll help put their minds at ease, okay? Or a friend or you know, somebody that you trust, make sure that they know that this is available. Now, to set up this feature, you're gonna want to go to the menu and the menu is in the upper left corner of both apps. And it looks like three lines, I call them the pancakes. Okay, so look for those three lines. I have a picture on my screen and it has those three lines circled in red with a big red arrow pointing to it. So you should be able to look for the three pancakes, okay? Now, once you tap on that, double tap if you're using voiceover, okay? You're gonna select that and it'll take you into the menus to share your location with someone that you trust. For Uber, you'll go to settings, then manage trusted contacts and add a contact, okay? So you'll go to settings, manage trusted contacts, and then add a contact. That's an Uber. For Lyft, you'll go to settings, then safety tools, and select add. And both of those apps will allow you to add contacts from your phone's contact list. So people who are already programmed in there, you can load that information and they would be contacted when you're taking a ride. The options within the features allow you to set up the frequency or when the app will share information with your contact. So you might not let them know every time you ride. You might just choose specific times that you want to let them know. So maybe if you are typically traveling in the daytime, you might not share every time that you travel. 
But if you're uh, typically traveling at night, maybe between, you know, six o'clock and midnight, you might always want to share that information. So you can set that up within the app. But it's a really nice way for people to know where you are and they get notifications of your pickup times, your, your drop off, those kinds of things. Okay. All right, let's jump away from some of the safety things a little bit and just look at um, how to kind of figure out how much is this gonna cost me, okay? So after you've begun to take some rides, you can actually estimate what the trip cost might be by looking back in your history. So there's a graphic that shows you two previous trips that were taken and they were taken to the exact same location, but the Uber drivers took different routes. They're not set to a specific route. And the prices were $6.57 and $5.81. They're very close in price, but one took place early in the evening around 8 p.m. and the other took place after 11 p.m. So the prices are less than a dollar difference and it just might help you with planning in the future. So take a look at that. Once you've taken a few trips, you might be able to start comparing your prices and get a good idea of what it's going to cost. Okay, we are going to put in the chat some information. We're not gonna go into these different uh, links this afternoon but I'm going to put these links in the chat for you. They are things that might be helpful for you to know. The first one is um, information from Uber talking about accessibility and using Uber. The second one is accessibility in the Lyft app and the website, they have a website too. And then the third one is for using voiceover in iOS to create an account or log back in to Lyft, okay? So, oh, thank you, Leanne, you are right on. Um, oh, I don't know if that's the exact same stuff. We're gonna put, we'll put in the links real quick for you. You can put the links and I put the handout which gives your PowerPoint. Brilliant, thank you so much. All right, give me just a second, you guys, and we'll load that in for you. Sorry, I have competing chats and sticky notes and all these wonderful things going on on my computer. We'll get you going with that in just a second. Okay. Oops. One second, there we go. All right, I want you to also think about some things um, as far as what to consider during COVID-19. All right, during COVID-19, you know, there's, safety considerations that you're gonna want. You might think about making sure you're wearing your mask, okay? Sitting in the back seat to give more distance between the driver and yourself. Uh, some drivers you may find are gonna use a plastic barrier that goes between the front seat and the back seat to help provide more protection. But just be aware that if that's there, it might also muffle the sound a little bit. So it might be harder to hear them. And you might be wondering, why can't I hardly hear this person? If you check, there might be that plastic barrier there. Okay. Use hand sanitizer, both before and after your ride. And um, the last thing that I want you to know about is contactless tipping. So you can actually tip your driver um, using the Rideshare app and it's customary to tip a driver for their service. So you do not have to pay cash. You can just tip them right in the Rideshare app. Some people tip 15%, some people tip 20% of the fare, okay? So if the fare is $5, they're gonna tip them 20% of that fare, okay? And usually you'll tip them for good service. You might tip them a little bit more if they helped unload your luggage, okay? Different things like that, or if they helped you to the door, so just keep in mind that often uh, it's, it's a good idea to tip somebody for their service and for doing good work for you. 
All right. So now I want you to look at the picture here with Maggie and down at the bottom, I have this big circle around five star rating. So in both Uber and Lyft, at the end of the ride, you have an opportunity to rate and tip your driver. And there will also be a prompt that'll come up in the app that will tell you to do that, okay? And the star rating is one through five stars. And five is considered the best, so that's always good to know. If you've had a great ride with a driver and the driver's friendly and they've helped you out, give them five stars. This is their, this is their job, this is their, their work. Most of them take pride in it and you want to reward them with the five stars because it helps them to get more rides that they can give to other people. If the driver was rude or they made the ride unpleasant in some way, you can rate them accordingly. Okay, give them a lower star rating if you feel it's necessary. At the end of the ride though, the driver also has the opportunity to rate you as a passenger. So be sure to be courteous, be sure to make sure you gather up all your materials, don't leave anything behind. Um, the service actually could charge you a pretty large fee if you leave items behind that need to be returned to you. I think Miss Robin was telling us that she she accidentally left something one time and she got charged like $15 just so that she could get her item back. So just be aware that it could be extremely, extremely expensive. Oh, Miss Robin just wrote, it totally cost her big money, big money. So double check, make sure that your seat is clear, make sure that you've gotten things out of the trunk, Make sure that you have your bags with you. I get in the, in the ride and I typically have my backpack on my lap or my bag on my lap. And if I have a suitcase with me, sometimes I let them put it in the trunk, but sometimes I prefer to keep it right with me where I can see it and I don't forget it. So just keep those things in mind, okay? And don't worry, I will put that, uh, the link to the, the three documents in the, in the chat for you. Okay. <laughs> Nydia, that is so sweet. You are right. Everyone does make mistakes and sometimes it happens, but just if you can keep track of it, that is helpful. And I love Kathy. Oh yeah. Don't let your phone slide out of your pocket. Check, check, check. You are so right because, oh my gosh, I, <laughs> I would just not know what to do if I didn't have my phone. That's kind of like my little, my little personal computer that travels with me. That's my way to get a ride. That's my way to contact family. That's my way to check my email. Yeah, don't lose your phone. That would be rough. And Miss Robin says she will never make that mistake again. She uses her flashlight at night to fully inspect the car before she gets out brilliant idea. Yeah, you can actually use the flashlight right on your phone. You don't even have to carry a second one. That's a cool idea, right? Okay. Oh, Donnie, what happens if we leave stuff in the car? Yeah, well, you either have to contact the, the company. You might still have a contact for the driver, um, depending on how soon you realize that that happened, um, but not always. So just be aware, but you might have to actually contact the company to get that information back. Maybe Miss Robin, I don't, I don't know if you are able to tell us, but maybe you could tell us how you were able to get your stuff back. Looks like she might not have the ability to tell us right now and that's okay. All right, so if you're going to go somewhere, um, yes, you might be able to use a phone app. Mm -hmm. called Compass. Good, Nydia. All right. Miss Maggie, I believe right. you are on. All right. Thanks, Amanda. So we've got one more question for the chat, right? You're well on your way to using rideshare services. And while you're in rideshare, you might want to find out more information about the city that you're in, or even about your um, route or destination or just information about your driver. So 
while you're writing, you might want to connect. We want to know what are some examples of small talk, small talk conversations that you can have with your driver that might be helpful for you as you ride. Can you put those in the chat for us? So what are some examples of small talk or things that you could ask or say to your driver while you're riding? Connie says, what's your name? Yep, that would be a good thing. And hopefully you'll know what their name is, Donnie, because it will tell you when you actually sign up on the, the app for a ride, it'll tell you which driver has taken your, your order, the one that's going to come get you. So you'll know what their name is based on uh, what it tells you in the app. Oh, I like that, Riley. Ask them to tell you what um, businesses you're passing as you drive. Yeah, that's a great idea. And Deliria says, how long have you been a driver? I think that's a great question. It kind of gives you an idea of whether or not they know the ins and outs of, of uh, the business. So that's always good. It might also be able to give you a lot of good information about the city that you're traveling to, or even your own city, if they know the area really well because they've been a driver for a long time. Absolutely. Casey says, when I'm taking Uber or Lyft and I'm in a different city or state, I usually ask the driver what fun and cool things are around that I could go check out. Casey, I do the same thing. I always wanna know what, what is something I should go visit while I'm in this town? All right. Oh yeah, Nydia, you're right. It's always fun to ask them to tell you about the, the different locations around you because when you can't see them, it's nice to know what's there. If you can't look out your window and see it, it's really nice to have somebody to tell you, oh yeah, we're passing you know, the White Sox Stadium or we're, um, we're near the Joe Louis Arena or we're near the, um, the Museum of Arts and you know, just knowing what's around you is so nice. And it also just passes the time so that you don't feel uncomfortable as you're riding. But I will tell you, you don't have to say anything. If you want to just get in and ride, that's okay too. So don't feel like you have to say something. Any other ideas of what kinds of things you might say to the driver? <laughs> Where are you dropping me off? Well, gosh, yeah, that would be nice to know, right, Robin? <laughs> are there stairs in front of the, of the entrance? Are you dropping me off on the main entrance? Are you dropping me off like at a spot that is kind of to the side of the building? Maybe, maybe it's not safe to drop you off in the very front of the building. Maybe there's too much traffic that day. And yeah, that's always helpful. All right. Yes. Is there a main door? Those are really good questions, Robin. Yeah. What time am I going to be there? You know, Donnie, that's a good question too. And hopefully it'll be for the time that you were hoping to get to your destination, but sometimes there's bad traffic, right? What if you're in the car and all of a sudden it just like really slows down and you're not going very far? You know what? There might be a traffic backup and it could delay your time or your estimated time of arrival. So that's good to know. Yep. Leanne, good. Is there a ramp nearby? Those are all really great questions, everybody. I think that you have the right ideas of what things to ask the driver when you are taking a ride share. Are there any other questions that any of you have for myself or Maggie before we let you guys go for the day? Do they drive 24 seven? You know what, Donnie, that's an excellent question. And I do believe that there are drivers most parts of the day. I've had an Uber driver at 4 a.m. for an early, early flight that I had to take from California to Michigan. So I do think that there are drivers that kind of drive at different points of the day. So 
good chance that you could. But I think that the number of drivers really, really late at night are probably less than the ones that you get all day long. There might be more drivers during the day. Ooh, Ricky Lynn, that's a good question. Do you know if it's possible to request a specific driver? Maggie, you might be able to answer this better than me, but I don't think you can. You can't request a specific driver, but one really cool thing about rating your driver and then also being rated is that if either of you give less than a three star, then you'll never be connected again. So if you have a bad experience, the app won't connect the driver to the passenger. Great questions, you guys. Anything else? Awesome, we're so glad that you joined us today and I hope that you learned something new and that you can share some new information with your students and share new information with your families about how to use Rideshare. Thank you so much, Amanda and Maggie. This was wonderful. I will also say having the opportunity for either of those can also be based on your location. My son is located in a very rural area of California and he has neither available to him. So it can depend on what's near you. So you'll have to check and see. That is so true, Leanne. <laughs> I, cannot get, I cannot get ride share from my house. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Thank you all for joining us. This was fabulous. If you're going to join us tomorrow, we're talking about recreation and leisure. So again, thank you, both of you. This was fabulous. And thank you all for joining us. Our pleasure.